Greetings and welcome to our daily walk through the scripture for June the 23rd. Your readings today find you reading 2 Kings chapter 6 and 7, Acts chapter 15 starting in verse 36 and going all the way through Acts 16 verse 15. And also you're reading Psalm 142 and Proverbs chapter 17 verse 24 and 25. Now in Acts chapter 15 we have uh, one of the uh, really I would consider it a tragic story when you first read it. But then as you look into it a little bit deeper, you discover that God sometimes does things out of our own folly and out of our own uh, mistakes. We see the schism between Paul and Barnabas happen here at the end of Acts chapter 15. And it all starts because of the relationship of one person, a guy by the name of John Mark, who happens to be Barnabas's cousin. John Mark, if you remember, had been with them in the book of Acts, and then at some point he split with them and he left and he did not continue with them. We don't know the reasons why that is, but we do know, however, that Paul didn't receive it very well based on this conversation that happens between Paul and Barnabas. And it causes such a strong disagreement that Paul and Barnabas, this amazing preaching team, split. Now, at that point, you might read it and go, oh, well, you know, there, there it goes. The dream team is over. The dream team is done. And, and you might think that, but the reality is, is that God takes our own humanness sometimes and uses it for his glory. And in the case of this, Paul continued on his journey, and that's the one that we follow. And we discover that Paul adds some additional companions to his trip. We see him here in chapter 16, encounter a young man by the name of Timothy, whose father was Greek, but whose mother was Jewish. Okay, now Timothy... We know who Timothy is. Timothy becomes one of Paul's best, strongest disciples. Uh, There's a beautiful mentor relationship that we can learn and follow from. And we know that Timothy goes on to become a pastor and a church planter because uh, Paul gives him instructions. That's what the whole point of the first and second Timothy letters is. But out of the ashes of a wrecked relationship come new relationships that God then uses to further his glory. And there's no doubt that that certainly happened with Paul. And eventually, Paul would have on a new person, Silas. Uh, and so this was a big deal. Now, what happened to Barnabas? We know that Barnabas continued to be a missionary, that he continued to plant churches. Um, and But we don't really know. We don't know that Paul and Barnabas ever became reconciled. We don't know if that relationship was ever fixed. However, we do know that another relationship was fixed. Paul and Mark end up having a reconciled relationship. Um, we know that that in some of his later letters, Paul comments to how John Mark has is useful to him and useful for advancing the kingdom of God. So there has been a relationship reconciliation. Whereas Paul might have looked at John Mark as a liability or a man lacking in character or integrity, Um, God's grace abounded, and over the period of time, John Mark obviously proved himself to be not what Paul thought he was, whether this came as a result of maturity or as a result of of whatever, um, Paul and Mark become reconciled. This is important for us. You see, we might have relationships that have been severed, that have been damaged, that have been hurt, and uh, we, we wonder whether they're ever going to be reconciled. Or we look at a person and we judge them instantly on something, or we judge them because of a reaction or situation, and we forget that God is continually changing us and making us new, that God is sanctifying us. The thing that hurt us a few years ago might be of great benefit, that person might be of great benefit to us if we're willing to set aside those differences, if we're willing to forgive, if we're willing to try and reconcile. I can speak from my own personal experience that there have been people that I have had severed relationships with uh, that I have come back and reconciled and have found these relationships to be more powerful, more beautiful, better than ever as a result of it. And it's all because of grace and both of us recognizing that who we were is not who we are and that God is continually making us new. And so these are important tools for us as followers of Christ when we lead with grace When we lead with these things, we recognize that, you know what, time really can heal all wounds, but more importantly, God can change lives, which then as a result heals those wounds because we are not the same. Thank you, Lord. Okay, that's it for our conversation today. We'll talk more tomorrow.